It's time for the Taco Truck Roundup for the week of April 8th, 2024. This is the show where I save you time by telling you about all of the new lifetime deals at AppSumo so you can quickly decide which tools are worth trying out for your business. This week, we've got seven new deals as well as a brand new concise format. So let's stop wasting time and get into the first deal, which is called Clever. Clever is a content marketing tool that's heavily powered by AI, and it solves the problem of humans are expensive. So if you replace the humans in your business with AI, you'll instantly become more profitable because you don't have to hire so many humans. Now, Clever has this thing it calls workflows that they set out to replace, but maybe more realistically, they will enhance your marketing sales or HR teams. And they're also going to be doing finance in the future, but they're not currently available right now. So how does this thing work? Well, if you log into a Clever account, you're going to see that on the surface, everything looks really good. We've got our workflows up to the upper left hand corner. And down below that, there's some more typical generative AI functions. They have a generative AI text function that is quite nice. It looks really good, but it has a fatal flaw, in my opinion. Hopefully something they could solve pretty easily. But the flaw is the fact that it doesn't have a history. So if you are deep into a conversation and then accidentally click away to another part of the screen and then come back, your entire conversation is gone. So that is a huge bummer for sure. There's also no way to browse previous conversations, which is something I find myself doing all the time on things like Claude or ChatGPT. Now they've got some image generation, which I found to be quite good. I went ahead and I tried to create a prompt that had a sumo wrestler eating a taco in Austin, and I was actually fairly impressed at the output. I do think this is powered by Dolly, so no huge surprise there at the quality. The quality was very good. I think the quality of the text generation was very good as well. It was just that history function that was sorely missing. Now, the problem started when I tried out the workflows, which is kind of their killer feature, right? It was kind of disappointing because I tried their feedback to website workflow, which is essentially supposed to allow me to give them a URL, and then they will provide some feedback on a certain part of that website. And I thought that was a really cool sounding idea. However, when I tried it out, there was two websites I tried it on and it couldn't get the data from either one of them. It gave me different errors for each website and the websites themselves were definitely online. So I'm not sure what was going on there, but it just didn't work for me, which was disappointing. So I tried another workflow. This time I tried to generate a blog post. I thought this would be a little bit more safe to generate. So I gave it a topic and it put out a pretty lengthy post in the very first attempt. However, in my opinion, the article needed quite a bit of human intervention. It just ended too abruptly after paragraphs. Uh, there'd often be questions at the end of a paragraph that didn't really have an answer. It was like I was supposed to go and then Google and find out and maybe report back to the blog what was going on. All right, let's talk about the deal specifics because all of the plans have limitations for things like workflow credits, word creation, and AI image generation. Now, I can totally understand the need for limits. We're dealing with API calls that are not free, so that makes sense. But maybe they could just have a cap on the word creation and the image creation. That would make me personally feel a lot better. When there's too many restrictions, it just feels overwhelmingly restrictive, even if it's not realistic that I'm going to run into these limits. Now, of course, you can always just increase the limits by buying a higher tier plan at AppSumo, but it's also too important to note that when you choose your plan at AppSumo, it's going to basically choose which plan you're mapped to on Clever's website. So for example, tier one on AppSumo is mapped to Clever's starter plan, but if you get tier two or three, you're gonna be mapped to their premium plan, which is currently their highest tier. And so if they add new features to Clever and it only goes into the premium plan, you'll probably wish you had ponied up for tier two or tier three. Now, it's also important to note that in tier three on AppSumo, you get unlimited users. And that's something that you don't even get if you go right and buy the highest paid plan on Clever's website. So if you need a lot of users, definitely check that one out. Overall, I think Clever is a good idea, but the workflows themselves just are not reliable enough right now to truly replace humans. The idea of an all AI agency is exciting to me and something that will inevitably leave me looking for work. But as of right now, Clever is a 5.8. Hey, just real quick, if you love lifetime deals and you want to keep up with everything that's new in the world of AppSumo, make sure you get subscribed to this channel. 
It would also mean a ton to me if you click that like button. It just helps get the word out about this video so that other people can find more videos when I produce new ones each week. It just keeps everything sustainable as long as the channel is growing. All right, now that that's done, on to our next deal, which is Quasar Video. Now, Quasar Video's goal is to help you follow the latest video trends that are happening on social media without actually having to be on social media. Hey, that sounds pretty good to me. So basically what it does is it scans videos on Instagram or TikTok, and then it analyzes them to help you understand what is popular. So it's obviously powered by AI. So after it scans the video, you can chat with it about what it's discovered or even have it help you script a video based on what it's learned. Now I stuck to the fitness niche with the mindset of like, what if I were starting a fitness channel, is this actually going to be helpful? Now, one of the features that was most attractive to me was called the script writer. And I was actually a pretty disappointed by this because really it should just be called video summary. If you called it that, I'd say, okay, that's actually helpful a little bit. What it does is it analyzes the videos, looking at probably transcribing them, I imagine, and then just giving me a brief summary about what the video is about. It doesn't actually write a script for you. Now, there is this AI component where you can ask questions about videos, but what I found out was that while Quasar is able to analyze individual videos, it doesn't compare the videos to each other. So when I asked about what the most popular exercises are in the videos that it scanned, it just highlighted the most popular exercise from each video. And when I asked it about the least popular exercises, it highlighted the same exercises. That's because short form content like it's focused on really is gonna focus on you know one topic per video. So I was hoping I could actually extract some data to find out what the most popular topics were for videos. But in the end, it was probably just easier for me to watch the videos and maybe take some notes as I go. Now, at least that's the way it worked with the small amount of data that I was working with. Quasar also has a feature called the data dashboard. And I thought this was a pretty nice idea, but there were some UI issues like text contrast just being almost impossible to read. And I don't, I'm not colorblind, but still I found it very difficult to read. And there was also some issues just understanding exactly what the metrics meant because there often wasn't enough data displayed on each access to understand the data I was looking at. So for example, there's one called the engagement by duration. Now that's great, but which number is actually the time and which number is the engagement and what does engagement mean? I couldn't find any clearly defined information anywhere and there was no help docs to clarify. The tiers are based strictly on usage. So just choose the plan that fits with your budget and needs and you can always upgrade while the deal is still running or downgrade within 60 days of purchase. So my closing thoughts on Quasar are that it's kind of hard to take it seriously as a video analytics platform when it doesn't work with YouTube. It only works with TikTok and Instagram. It also had a severe lack of documentation and the clarity in the data was muddy at best. So Quasar Video gets a 5.9 from me. Now, by the way, I do have links for all of the deals I'm talking about in this video. They're down below in the description. Your clicks help support this content. So make sure you use them before making a purchase. It really helps me out a ton. And I also wanna note that this video is actually sponsored by AppSumo. That's right, AppSumo sponsors these taco truck roundups, but they have absolutely no input on my reviews or the opinions that I give, as you can probably tell because I haven't really liked the first two deals. All right, now let's get back into it because there's a lot more to talk about. The next one is called vidboard.ai. Now, vidboard is a tool that helps you create those AI-driven videos. Basically, you can create avatars or use their built-in avatars to generate videos that are basically created entirely with AI. You've certainly seen videos like this online. Uh, they're often kind of cringy at this point, but it's still cool. You know, it's like one of those moments where, hey, that's awesome that you can do this, but am I happy that you can do this? I'm not really sure yet. And if it gets really good, maybe I won't like it. So you can use their built-in avatars or upload your own, and it supports 125 languages, which is very impressive. It also has a built-in collection of templates and integrates with popular stock media libraries like Unsplash, Pexels, Pixabay, and even has a small little stock music library so you can add some background music to your videos. Now, right now, this is pretty much just for creating presentations, but there are standalone videos on the roadmap. So if you wanna do that, it's coming. So how well did it perform? Well, I'm gonna start with the ugly. 
Vidboard.ai crashed on me flat out when I was using the Safari browser. So I switched over to Chromium-based Arc and it performed much better, although there is still some funkiness throughout. So for example, if you click on a preview button for a template, the preview pops up, but it actually goes outside of the container that it's supposed to be displayed in. This is just obviously a small technical mistake and it'd be very easy to fix. It's probably just one or two numbers inside some CSS, but it's a mistake that clearly should not be there in the first place. It's a for sale product. I mean, like let's have a little bit more polish. My next gripe is that it's just plain frustrating to add your scripts. You have to click on a slide and then enter in your script on a little tiny box. And then below that, you have to choose which voice you want to use and which language it's in. And you have to do that on every single slide. There's no way to set like, okay, this is the default voice for my entire presentation. Now I can see the upside to this being, well, if you want to use multiple avatars to have people kind of conversing or presenting together, that becomes possible with this setup. But if you're just going to use a single voice for the whole presentation, it becomes quite annoying. I'm sure there is a better UI solution to solve the problem of having two presenters. To double down on the problem, if you click on a different slide while you're working, let's say you're on slide two and you click on slide three, and then you go back to slide two, all of your progress is erased. There's no save button that I can see. The only way you get it to actually save is if you go through the entire process and actually click on that add voice button all the way at the bottom after you've chosen your voice and your language and you've confirmed that this is what I want. You click that and it's actually baked into your presentation at that point. And even then there's not a very clear indicator that it has been applied. I think they could solve this with like a little green checkbox after you've clicked the add voice button. You can also drop in images, icons, videos, and music, and all of this works really great in Arc. When I was in Safari, that's where things got a little bit haywire. When I added some music, everything crashed and I lost all of my progress. Like I mentioned, there's absolutely no save mechanism that I can find, and that's really frustrating, especially when the tool itself isn't that reliable yet. So I'd love to see a save function added like ASAP. Okay, it sounds like I'm complaining about this tool quite a bit, but it's still like an amazing feat of technology, right? I mean, we're creating videos where they didn't exist before. I will say that the voices are pretty good. They're not completely human. You can still tell that they're computer generated, but they have a very good approach to the inflection. Like if you just type in a random paragraph, it will add the normal human inflection at the end or start of a sentence. Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to my TED Talk on fall fashion. The lip syncing is not very realistic at this point, but honestly, I'm afraid of the day that it is. So my real problem actually was that when I clicked on generate my video, I got a message that popped up and it said it'll be available in a few minutes and it would email me, but then it just never arrived. And it's been many, many hours at this point. I have not seen anything from this company. Uh, so I, I checked my account. It definitely is still not available. Maybe it's because my testing was done on a trial account, although the trial account is supposed to get one free video generation. So I don't know why it didn't work. It could be that it's just overwhelmed from sumo links and maybe it's still in some queue somewhere, but I was kind of disappointed. All right, so let's talk about the deal details. First of all, no custom avatars for tier one. So if you want to use your own face to generate a video, you're going to need to go with tier two and above. But otherwise, all of the other limits just scale up as you go up and up to tier five. So choose a plan that fits with the number of minutes of video you want to create per month or the number of avatars you think you're going to need. So Vidboard is a 5.9, but if you're an AI enthusiast, you can ignore my rating and just take a flyer on it. I get it. This technology seems like it shouldn't be possible and to have a lifetime access to a tool like this is pretty tempting, honestly, even though it's kind of flawed right now. So hopefully their reliability improves quickly and the LTD investment will pay off big time. But you never really know with these things, especially at the pace that AI is constantly innovating. Moving on up next is BrainCert. This is a online course builder that helps you sell online courses or even create your own Udemy style marketplace. Now there are every feature you can imagine in this tool. We've got bundles, subscriptions, one-time payments. You can sell a course any way you want. And of course there is AI built in for your course creation. It helps you outline your course very efficiently. 
Now, on top of traditional online courses, BrainCert also offers live classes with breakout rooms and recordings. So this is a pretty full-featured deal, one I have not really seen this comprehensive on an LTD before. But how well does it work? First of all, for my review, I focused on course creation and website editing because there are just so many features here. It really deserves its own dedicated video. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see more. But if you've been following my LTD reviews for a while, you'll know that one of my rules is to not buy platforms. Just too much risk. However, I might be eating my hat with BrainCert. BrainCert does everything wonderfully, dare I say. Now, of course, there is still room for some UX improvements, but this is a professional course building tool. It's not just some thrown together slapdash pile of code. It includes a professional website builder as well. Like it's very, very well done. I'm shocked at how good everything is. So here's how it works. First, you upload your content or you can even link to content that's on other platforms. Heck, you can even upload HTML if you want to write HTML and provide that inside of your course. You can do that. So once you have your content uploaded, then you create a course and then you create your outline. And this is where you can use AI to do that if you want. Now, this kind of broken up user experience might be counterintuitive to beginners, but if you build online courses frequently, you'll know that this is the best way to do things, to separate your content into a central hub so that you can reuse lessons across multiple courses when necessary. This way, if you update a video for one course, it will automatically be updated in all of them. So for example, let's say you have a course about WordPress and you're showing people how to install a plugin. Now, this might be one lesson that has been replicated across a dozen different courses. So what happens when WordPress inevitably updates their UI every 20 years? Well, then you have to record a new video. And if you don't have one place in your LMS to update that video, you have to go searching through each individual course finding that lesson and updating that video. So this is clearly a better way to do it and just keep your courses maintained. But I think they should also make it possible to add the content right when you're creating the course outline so that you don't have to jump out into another screen. I think both would be possible. And I know I just briefly mentioned it before, but the website builder is good. It's focused and has classes and IDs and W2F, how is it so good? Like, where did this come from? I, I can't be a standalone thing they just built for this product. If anyone knows, drop me a line down below. It has like hints of Grapes.js, but I don't think it is entirely Grapes.js. All right, on to the deal details. First of all, skip tier one if you plan to sell your course at all, because it has a 5% transaction fee, which is pretty hefty. You'd be better off just paying 120 bucks extra and getting tier two, which has zero transaction fees. If you scale all the way up to tier five, you're going to get unlimited administrators as well as unlimited authors, but you'll still have a cap of 300 total courses. If you're doing live courses, be sure to choose a plan that fits with how many minutes of virtual classroom time you'll need. So let's talk score. This is good. This is a really good tool. And if you do courses or you're thinking about doing courses in the future, I would lock this in 8.8. .8. Next up is Email Meter. This is an email management tool that gives you email analytics for Gmail or Google's workspace. And I never thought of a tool like this before, but the goal is to help you improve your email workflows by showing you how many emails you're sending and receiving as well as your average response time. And if you get a team plan, you can even get analytics across your entire organization to see how your team is utilizing email. You can see things like the busiest hours for sent and received email. So now you have some data and you can try to set some goals. Like I want to improve our response time to make clients happier, or maybe I want to cut down on the number of emails sent outside of work hours so that people don't get burned out and they're not just working 24 seven. So how well does it work? Pretty good. If you're interested in these kind of analytics, they are clearly displayed. There's no doubt about what data you're looking at. The UI UX is clean and you're not gonna find another tool out there that's quite like this. I, I've never thought of presenting data this way and Email Meter is doing it in a very, very competent way. Now, one thing that's worth noting and it's important to privacy, that Email Meter cannot actually see the body of your email. So if you're concerned about privacy, you can put those fears away, 
Google says right away that they can't read your actual email. So I was concerned about that and I was happy to see that that was the case. Although this tool looks pretty good, is it useful? Is there a reason I've never seen another tool like this before? I think it's interesting, but it's not really useful in my scenario. I think that might be the case for many people. Now, usually if you have a CRM or a help desk, that tool is going to measure response time. I've never really heard of a company measuring the response time for your like general work email, your person to person email, but I guess it could be helpful. I mean, what gets measured gets managed. Deal details. So tier one is for solo email only. Grab tier two or tier three if you want a team plan. You'll just need to choose the plan that fits with the number of inboxes you need to manage. So email meter is a 7.1. It's a good, solid tool. It's not going to blow your mind, but if you need this type of data, I don't think there's a better way to get it. Up next is Blogify, a content marketing tool that will take any piece of audio or video and turn it into a blog post. So it uses AI to take your existing audio and then creates the blog post and does SEO optimization so that you can then share your new post on your website or on social media. It supports 150 different languages and it's hoping to be the content repurposing tool you need, but how well does it hold up to my testing? Well, using Blogify is super easy. It's basically a form that you fill out you link to the source of your original content or upload it if you have it on your computer. And then you choose the length of the output you want for your blog. You can also set things like the tone and you're off and running. You just click a button and then wait a few minutes and you have a complete blog post. I thought it was cool that you could even convert from one language to another. You just set the media language, which you're pulling your source to one language. And then you set the output to a different language. That's the blog language. So maybe you have a YouTube video that's in Spanish and you want to convert it into an English blog post, just set it up and you are ready to go. I think that's pretty cool. Now, in my opinion, AI content is still not quite the same as human generated content, although that's changing almost day by day at this point. But I was pretty impressed with Blogify. I linked to a recent YouTube video that I made on Eventin, about 25 minutes long, clicked a button and then waited several minutes and then I had a pretty comprehensive blog post. It had headings, bullets, keywords, the entire video outline. It's pretty cool. You can then publish your post directly to WordPress or export it to just about any format you like. There's also a few other features that are worth mentioning. One is called YouTube Connect, which basically you connect up your YouTube channel and it pulls in a list of all of your recent videos. So you just click a button and then your video is automatically converted into a blog post, basically giving you the ability to blog by just creating videos. Amazing. They also have another option for creating blogs called Copilot. And with Copilot, it's going to ask you some additional questions, help you shape the outline along the way to make sure that your article kind of takes shape how you'd like it to. Honestly, I feel like just using the one shot generation is pretty much as good. All right, onto the plans and pricing. What are the deal details? What do you want to look out for when making a purchase? Well, you're going to need to get plan three for that feature I just mentioned, the co-pilot blog creation. Once again, this just let, lets you steer the direction of the blog post a little bit more than a automatic click a button, get a post type of output. And if you want that YouTube connect, you're going to need to get tier five, which allows you again to import videos directly from YouTube. Now you can still create blog posts from YouTube. You just have to have each individual URL and then copy and paste it from YouTube into Blogify. All right, time for a score. Blogify gets a 7.6 for me. I really like this tool and I think it has a bright future. It is gonna be interesting to see how things evolve, especially as AI models improve. Hopefully Blogify adopts newer, better models as they become available, like Claude Opus is kind of the thing right now. And hopefully that rolls out to all of these open AI focused tools. Or maybe open AI gets better. We just don't know what's gonna happen. Onward to Strayco. Now, all of the cool kids know that AI is the key to getting more done in less time. But all of these subscriptions to services like Claude Pro, ChatGPT Plus, Midjourney, it gets expensive. You could easily spend hundreds of dollars a month on AI tools. But what if I told you that you could pay once and get access to all of the models at the same time and for life, like a one-time payment? Yeah, that's the point of AppSumo, one-time payments. 
So you'll get GPT-4 Turbo, Claude 3 Opus, and Stable Diffusion XL. This sounds too good to be true to me, so let's test it out. Straco's strength, in my opinion, is its text chat. It has just great tools for organizing chats, including folders and search. I'd love to see that in GPT+. You can also pull up a prompt template with the ever popular slash command. I think that notion may be made super popular. So the way it works is you're in the middle of a chat and you just type slash and then you'll see a screen that pops up that lets you choose from a range of prompt templates. And of course, you can even create your own templates and then share them with a link if you want them to be, you know, used by people all over the world. The image generation, however, is powered by Stable Diffusion XL, which is honestly feeling a little dated these days as I've just gotten used to Midjourney and Dolly. However, there are still great images being created by Stable Diffusion, so I wouldn't write it off quite yet. I just think the text prompting is a little bit stronger. I really love in the text prompting how you can choose multiple models at the same time and then just toggle between the outputs to see how different models handle the same inputs. Really, really cool feature. All right, on to the plans and pricing. Here are the deal details. So essentially, all of the plans are based on usage. You get all of the features no matter which plan you go with. It's just the monthly usage that will be limiting. So choose a tier that's just a little bit higher than you think you're ever going to use. That way you won't run into any limitations. Keep in mind, this is a one-time payment versus a subscription. So a one-time payment, if it's, you know, 30, 40 bucks more than you want to spend, that's okay because you never have to spend it again. Now, personally, I'm going to keep paying for Claude Pro, but I think this is a really cool tool. And I like the fact that it uses API connections because often the newest features are rolled out in APIs first. So you might actually get better data going with this tool than paying the monthly subscriptions. I think the two best use cases for this is if you're allergic to monthly subscriptions and you just want to have no monthly subscriptions, or you enjoy comparing the outputs of various models, which I could see being something that is helpful from a research perspective. So what was your favorite deal of the week? Comment down below. Did you prefer Clever, Quasar Video, Vidboard.ai, BrainSert, Email Meter, Blogify, or Straco? That's all for this week's Taco Truck Roundup, but the fun doesn't have to stop here. Check out one of my other videos, ask me a question in the comments, or click on my AppSumo link and start shopping for LTDs. My name is Dave Swift. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week.